Mega Man Special World 2 Night Battles. We start out with Mega Man on drive being ambushed by Zomom falling and knocking him out of the car onto the road. He immediately gets himself looking like the Mega Man we know, as his technology lets him magically do that, and he calls Zomom a yellow devil. It's so obvious the next panel should have shown that old guy's foot hitting Mega Man. Mega Man's conflicted because he can't bring harm to a living thing. Okay, so this explains what well he to them despite all his overpoweredness. His programming doesn't let him choose to save himself. Never mind, he punches Zaz away anyways. So why didn't he kill Wily and Mega Man 7? It's not killing him, but it could. Also, for anyone who finds Zaz annoying, you get nothing out of this panel because you don't even see his fist collide with him. So Amum grabs him, and then, uh, yellow rings appear, and suddenly he's not being held by him anymore. Then, I like the Master Zeke shows character depth by saying that these apples are inferior to the fruit in his garden, meaning that he has a fruit garden he cares about and he knows a lot about how good fruit are. Considering how every Zeddy's name starts with Z, their names are a bit easy to forget or confuse with each other. So it's a very good thing the comic tells you their names so much, because I never would have remembered what this guy's name was. Then all three of the Zeddy throw energy balls at him. Why didn't they do that in the first place? A lot of her time could have been saved. You know how accurately Zomom had to have landed to land on his car directly? He was lucky he even did. I doubt any of them knew exactly how fast it was moving and were great at math. It would have been more plausible if Mega Man had stopped his car first. Oh my god, an entire fucking page is wasted. I assumed this would be the end of the fight. What is the point of making it take longer if we all know he's gonna lose? Nothing happens, he just remembers people and then decides to get back up. It's so boring seeing so many panels dedicated to that. Are we supposed to take this seriously? He hears Zeke say that he's quite formidable, he doesn't know where he is, and so he doesn't get all the way in time before he gets blasted in the head, which really does look like his robotic head got blown off, Rick and Morty style, but somehow we're expected to believe he survived this. And when we saw him in the roboticizer tube, he didn't look like he had a head injury. We should have been shown that Zeke was hiding somewhere before this to have it not feel unfair and out left field that he surprised and attacked him and said Mega Man looking at him and all the time he was spending foolishly talking to him rather than blasting at him right away. He was very lucky he still got to hit him successfully after that. That wouldn't have happened. Even if he didn't know where the voice was coming from, he would have known to instinctively dodge just in case by now. What was the point of wasting an entire page on him getting the willpower to get back up if he's just gonna get blasted into defeat in one hit afterwards without doing anything? It's like they ran out of story material instead of making the fight longer. I assumed he'd at least get to blast him a couple of times to try to look inspiring. That tends to be the formula after heroes get back up. And the story ends by thankfully telling me where I need to go to see the actual next issue. Never mind. It just directs me to a story I already viewed. Instead of telling me the issue where Zonk and Mega Man will fight. Not oh, great, what a waste of my time. Zero and Axel versus Vile the Bad Guy. Gee, I wonder if they'll win. Axel jokingly calls Zero out on how he gave him a hard time when he wanted to join his side, considering that an obvious cartoon villain like Axel used to be a Maverick Hunter too. They jump and hide, and I guess they were hiding on top of the thing floating above Vile. I don't even know what happened here because of the art. Did Zero hit a missile away with his arm and cause an explosion? We should have seen his arm hit the thing then. Can this end already? I'm so bored. I was interested when I realized that Axel was actually able to disguise himself perfectly as a guy who's apparently on Vile's side and aim a weapon at him. I don't remember that from the game, but then he gets attacked and not Vile. All because Axel was stupid enough to not instantly attack Vile and instead stand there like a statue doing nothing. And so Vile looked at him first. Vile wasn't even looking at him until he said Vile's name, which he didn't have to do. Zero had specifically told him to strike fast, and he couldn't follow one simple instruction. I'd say this makes him look like a complete rookie, but I've gotten used to baffling mistakes by characters at this point. Every main character is a complete rookie. It sure is nice of Zero to not call out Axel on his idiotic mistake and instead tell him to cover him. The whole time I was reading this issue, I was thinking that the art could be better, so that I'd be able to tell everything I was looking at instantly. But the colors are too bright here instead of Zero being completely red, and it's distracting. 
He's not fully red, just variations of it. Zero slashed the vial unsuccessfully, I guess hitting a force field he had, and wishes he would just stay dead. And Vile eventually shoots him successfully. At least the fight is trying to have good tension throughout because Vile is winning. But he's an unlikable bad guy. Shouldn't the writer have realized that we wanted to see him get smacked around a lot? Why well, prefer him? I guess Vile is saying no one can enter the fortress while he's trying to shoot at them the whole time. So it's not his fault he got interrupted. By Silver appearing out of nowhere instead of appearing in Icy Mountain. And telekinetically holding him still. It's smart of Silver to think to ask why Zero was fighting Vile in the first place. He's making sure Vile is actually a bad guy first before he does something impulsive. He doesn't know Vile's name, and he just got to this new universe. So for all he knew, he was making a mistake. Zero says he's trying to get past him and stop the madman inside this fortress. Without asking how he's a madman, Silver happily agrees to let them get in there. While we know that Zero is telling the truth, out of context, Silver's looking a bit gullible. What if he went to another universe and someone lied to him, saying something like this? I guess it's also smart of him to not immediately tell Kinetically to dismantle Vile, because for all he knows, these guys would consider him a murderer for doing so. Of course, it'd be smart of them to tell him to do that. I mean, Zero just said, why can't Vile just stay dead? So does Vile just keep getting put on death row and be given the death penalty? Or are they killing him? like, outside of the law every time. Because if it's the latter, then he should have no problem with Silver killing him. He would logically just tell Silver to dismantle him. He just said he wants him dead. He doesn't value his life. But Silver's just erring on the safe side. He doesn't have a reason to believe any of these guys are robots, because their text bubbles look normal, implying they have normal voices. And they have human faces. They just look like humans in armor. Actually, the same can be applied to Mega Man. So how did Sonic immediately assume he was a robot and worlds collide anyways? So maybe he thinks Vile's organic, he doesn't know what Reploid even means. So it's not completely forced that he doesn't just kill Vile here. He thinks he's organic, and he's not the type to do that. I was just thinking right from the start that you could easily kill Vile right away and they never have to worry about him again. But sadly, he'd probably be treated like a villain for it by these guys. So he was smart enough to avoid having to deal with that hassle. I love how relatably informal Silver's dialogue is. He's asked what he's gonna do with Vile, and he says, Oh, this guy? I don't know, hand him over to your people? What's Vile? When he say who's Vile? Zero runs up to X through a damaged wall, and is told that Sigma warped away through a portal, as the story is a prequel to Universe 76. I don't think it really needed to exist. But it's there to explain why the Boom comic story happened. That didn't need to exist either. Since Cyril met Silver, who mentioned Genesis portals in need of closing, wait a minute, how did Silver know a Genesis portal was in Sigma's base without going through it himself first? Anyway, Zero says that X should go talk to Silver, because it might be able to help them track Sigma down. Too bad Silver can't follow them and go with them to Styx's town, because it'd be extremely helpful to them with his powers. He'd end the crossover pretty quickly. I hope he doesn't get written to be in the same room as Sigma, because I'd probably be really mad at him for not instantly dismantling him. I hate that the story ends by saying that the Maverick Hunters were the winners as well as Silver. It completely lacks self-awareness. Wasn't Silver the only one who did anything successful against Vile? Everyone else got pummeled. The only reason I'm not thinking of Silver as a Deus Ex Machina is because I was already told that he goes through Genesis portals to other universes. So, he's a Chekhov's gunman, if anything. Then I go to the next story, and immediately all my hype dies and I'm bored as hell because I get introduced to a gigantic amount of text littered all over one giant panel in the blue tint, where the dialogue is boring as fuck, and nothing is happening and nothing new is being introduced. Which wasn't the case in the Knuckles comic when I had too much text in one panel. Holy shit, this was tedious to slog through. Why do we have to have an entire scene devoted to these guys doing nothing? Eggman basically says gibberish. Too much techno babble. Wily says that he used the processor for the Quickman robot to handle the roboticized Sonic. But he didn't need to do that. Isn't a processor a brain? Then Sonic already has a brain. 
Eggman roboticized Sonic in issue 39 just fine without needing to borrow another robot's processor. Ugh, this is so boring. Wily says to Eggman, there you are. Even though he's been talking with him in the same scene for quite some time. And he looks like he has something bad planned for him when he says to pull up a chair. But instead he says that showtime, as we see a bunch of robot masters preparing to fight Mega Man. The problem with these robot masters that probably cause fans to dismiss them as nothing but cameos is that they don't have deep, interesting personalities. They're all interchangeable with each other in that sense. Fireman having an accent doesn't fix that and make me care about him. If anything, it just annoys me because it makes his dialogue take longer to read properly. Each robot has one ability. It would obviously be more interesting to see Mega Man who could have any ability. At least Sonic's friends in the games have clear personalities that stand out. Here, I'm bored to death of these guys already. So I don't know why they're dedicating an entire story to this. Other than filler. I already know Sonic's gonna win against all of them. And they don't have personalities, so it seems unself-aware that I'm expected to care about them. I don't know why Sonic would be immune to Time Man's power. That makes no sense, no matter how fast he is. So that was bullshit. And immediately ruined the story, making it impossible to take the rest of it seriously. The heroes had a smart, brilliant plan against Sonic, and they failed because they can't live in a world where things progress in a logical way. It's just not fair. It was common sense for the writer not to use a character like Time Man against them. He's too overpowered, just omit him. So he gets attacked, Sonic hits someone I don't care about, and keeps Cut Man still with the ring power he already showed he could use 600 times. This is the problem with showing Sonic instead of Mega Man. I got bored of him really quickly because of how extremely limited his attack variety is. Where's his tornado power? All the varieties in the Robot Masters fighting him, which are each restricted to one power, but I know they're gonna lose. Are they even gonna hit him? While well, I knew these Robot Masters are good people, I'm not super invested in their personalities, so when you don't care about most of the characters in the story, it's hard to even motivate yourself to see the value in reading it. It's the eight deadly words. I don't care what happens to these people. And Sonic's not going to be interesting either. Iceman freezes Sonic with an ice beam. I was predicting that Sonic would immediately burst himself out of the ice through the power of bullshit. You'd think if the ice was as cold as it logically should be, considering it's coming from a robot with entire mastery over ice, he'd be so frozen that he'd already be unable to move without repairs, even if he was broken out of the ice. You don't thaw out instantly. Such a sudden temperature change from cold to hot would really hurt. Immediately, he gets shoved to the pavement cracking it while he's magically not frozen anymore, and he gets shocked. So much for the explanation that being shocked had melted the ice. Because it wasn't what happened. I guess it was smart of the Robot Masters to attack him anyways after he was frozen, just in case he could burst out of it. But they had no way of knowing he'd ever be able to do that. Now I was thinking he could vibrate at sonic speed so that the friction would melt the ice. But again, if he's too cold, and he's frozen, and, and he's covered in ice, he wouldn't be able to even try to move. So he wouldn't be able to try to vibrate. His CPU wouldn't even be functional. They're just wasting time with overkill of them. Somehow, after all of that, Sonic's still active. If it's because he has rings left over from Mobius, we should be told that. I can easily pretend that he still has some ring energy and absorbed the impact of the attacks he had to deal with. And so he's invincible while he was dealing with all that. And that's why he's no worse for wear, even after being frozen solid and electrocuted. Because the rings had instantly healed him. But we should really be told that. Eggman could be written to brag about that. That would be clearly taking advantage from being from the Sonic universe and having his survival here be justified. Which we need because in any other situation, he'd have been defeated. I usually need to assume that rings are what's saving the heroes from dying from slapstick, like in every continuity of Sonic. Because if I don't assume that, then usually it gets to a point where the whole continuity never should have happened because they would have died from the slapstick if logic was there. Archie Sonic had an entire issue Issue 35, completely dedicated to the existence of rings. And we even saw Sonic get hit and lose his rings. And in the issue that had not whole be destroyed, it was said that Sonic only survived all that slapstick because he had rings. So yeah, rings do work like that in Archie. So they do work like that here. So Sonic puts them on rings, 
and Fireman sends Fire out and accidentally attacks Iceman, as would realistically happen eventually with him being on the same team. Then someone on Fireman's side says he's taking him out because of that. Or is he talking to Sonic? It's smart of him to not blame Fireman for it. These are such boring people. Of course Sonic dodged the bomb thrown at him, so it blows up. But somehow all of them are actually intact after that. One of them was even able to tell Fireman to call Dr. Light at this point. All of them would have simply been spin dashed through. Why did it never ever occur to him to spin dash through all of them? That's the obvious overpowered move to use all the time right away. If Eggman got rid of his spin dash as a product of roboticizing him, that'd be extremely stupid of him. I'm so glad the story ended. It really didn't need to happen. It's not like the villains accomplished anything. The first story by Ian Flynn had Megaman have a convincingly hard time against the Zeddy. Although it felt a bit insulting that at the end, I was supposed to believe his CPU was perfectly intact when his entire head got blasted with a laser. Which happened, instead of him dodging after Zeke clearly talked to him before he got hit. Why waste a whole page of him getting the courage to get up again if he'll just get knocked out immediately after that? The second story by Flynn wasn't about Vile getting smacked around with tons of slapstick constantly. So for anyone who doesn't like Vile, it completely missed the appeal of an action scene with him. As a focus on high tension the whole time with the heroes being easily vested. Axel should have easily shot him instead of talking to him first and causing Vile to look at him while he did nothing. Vile didn't even get hit once! He just got frozen at the end by Silver when he showed up out of nowhere. That was an anticlimactic victory. I never felt like I needed to see Vile get subdued. It sure took up a lot of pages instead of progressing the arc as a whole. This didn't need to be written. I already knew that Vile was subdued. What's the point if he doesn't get hit? The only reason I would have wanted to see a story about this is if I saw him get smacked a lot. And the third story, by a writer calling himself T-Rex, immediately bored me having a pointless page with Wily and Eggman doing nothing, and then bored me the rest of the time because they don't care about these personality-less robot masters, and I've already been told that Sonic won over them. And he doesn't fight them in an interesting way, he just does a stupidly merciful thing he did before, and merely restrains them instead of spin-dashing through them all. That's not how I picture a robot Sonic to be. How do you screw that idea up? Eggman could have given that power to anybody for how well it represents Sonic's abilities. Mega Man could have had that power. These characters focus entirely on quantity over quality. The problem is, I don't like them enough to enjoy their dialogue and attacks. And I don't hate them enough to enjoy seeing them get hit. So they're just there and waste my time. I don't hate them because I like their designs, but I don't like them because they're boring. I could have assumed they fought Sonic. That could have been left off screen if it was this dull. It's not like Sonic successfully stole a gem and it was used to fund the villains' schemes. They had two brilliant plans against Sonic, and it's frustrating to see because you know that in a world where logic was allowed to prevail, they would have won immediately. But instead it's a world where the force of nature is forcing the characters to act a certain way and forcing events to happen so that an entire story arc can happen in a certain way. So instead, Sonic's magically immune to time in, and instantly breaks out of the ice. Which I could forgive, because maybe the metal he's made out of inside and out can withstand extreme temperatures. But even after being electrocuted, and slammed into the pavement, he's not even remotely damaged. And there's no explanation for that. And all the time Eggman and Wily were bragging about Sonic and Technobabble, they could have said he had rings. I have to assume that's the case. So, it can make sense that he survived that. But it wouldn't have gotten to this point. Having Time Man hit him at all just makes the rest of the plot forced and stupid, because of course he can't actually be frozen in time. He should have just missed him. Logically he would have, since he's that fast and would hear him coming. Eggman and Wily have faith in the heroes to beat Sigma once they de-roboticize each other. But you'd think they would have just as much faith in, in the robot cells, because the robot cells should have the same abilities as the organic cells. So why did they program them to fight each other and de-roboticize each other? 
they have faith in their organic cells, but not their robot cells. Like, either way, they're going to fight Sigma. 